and over to you. Okay, I think Teresa is uh, uploading the presentation and I'm going to start maybe with the presentation or inter introduction. I'm Carmen Herrero and a reader in Hispanic Studies at Manchester Metropolitan University and I'm one of the innovator scholars. Um, this is a new scheme that started this academic year and we're going to be talking about what we are doing as part of this scheme. Over to you, Teresa. Can you see the, the slide? Yes. Yes, we can. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yes, so uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm Teresa Nicholson. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a reader in the Department of Natural Sciences at Manchester Metropolitan University. And uh, like, like Carmen, I'm one of the, the institution's innovation scholars. Uh, and together we are responsible for, for driving forward the, the implementation of the, of the active learning part of our education strategy. Um, how are we doing for time? It's, uh, it's four minutes past. Should yeah. we give it till five minutes and then we'll, we'll make a start? Yeah. Maybe we can move to the next one and then uh, we can just maybe say thank you for inviting us to present uh, this um, webinar. Uh, we were invited to write a blog um, which has the same uh, title, theme, and as a result of that blog, we were then invited to offer this webinar to discuss uh, the progress that we've done as part of this strategic um, development of a, a community of learning. So what we are presenting here today is uh, what we've done so far and some of the strategies that we have followed, but also we are trying to explore with you, and it will be an interactive participation as well, uh, some of the possible and future plans, and we, got, uh, we want to get your ideas. And I think with this one, we can probably uh, see there the plan that we have for our webinar. So the first thing we're going to do is to introduce you our new education strategy. And we're going to talk about the different mechanisms that we have uh, been developing to create this momentum on the implementation of this strategy. Uh, we are going to be talking about what we've done so far. As I said, we only started in September. Uh, and the future plans, which we will also invite you to participate. And uh, finally, there will be some um, resources and, and plans that we will be very excited to share with you. I think you can pass now to the next one. So this is uh, the new uh, Manchester Met Education Strategy it was launched in September. And as you can see at the core, is the transformational active learning community and our core um, role is really activate this uh, and move forward this idea of how to bring along uh, active learning across uh, all the areas in the university uh, we have a key word there which is community inclusive community innovative community and supportive community and that is both involving and supporting uh, students as well as staff and looking at the curriculum and bringing along uh, digital enhanced learning and this goes along with assessment as you will see overall what we want to offer is excellent uh, student experience and an excellent education across all the areas of the university I think you can move now to the next one. Yeah. So, so as, as Carmen has said, we've got this institutional commitment to delivering this, this transformational active learning community. And, and you know, we, we're not suggesting in any way that, that, that nobody is doing this already. We know that, that there is some fantastic practice going across that going on across the, uni the university. Uh, in individuals and teaching teams and different programs, there's some really good um, uh, innovative practice happening. But in an institution the size of ours, um, it, it's it's really challenging to try to capture 
that good practice and and then to build on that and to use it uh, to, to help to galvanize others to to draw on that good practice as well and to use that to, to help to, to to guide what we do in the future and, and to and to get people engaged in it so this this is really the challenge for us in, in trying to move forward this community of practice it's capturing what's already there using that to galvanize uh, new actions and, and to guide what we do in the future um, and, and to engage as many people as possible um, effectively. And we've got three mechanisms that we're using to try to help with this. And the first one of these is about establishing leadership. Now, uh, to a large extent, this has this is now being put in place because um, as part of our um, our lead group, which is a, I've got to test myself now what it actually means. It's learning, education, enhancement and development, something like that. Um, and, and under this, um, under lead, um, there is a there is a unit that has established um, leadership in each of these key thematic areas. Uh, and, and as we said at the beginning, so Carmen and myself are, are leading on the active experiential skills based learning theme, but we have other themes around assessment, uh, enterprise, digital uh, fluencies, belonging and matching, and also uh, differential award gaps and other and other gaps as well. Um, and so we 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 are we are trying to drive forward this part of the the strategy. But of course, we all work very closely together because all of these different themes overlap enormously. Um, and, and so we've actually got quite a nice little community of leaders as well that are trying to, to do the, the, the leading beyond that. Um, now, I'm not going to show this video because it takes it, it's about five minutes. Oh, no, no, sorry, nearly six minutes. Um, but you can access this um, yourselves later on if you want to. Um, it's just a little video that, that all of those uh, innovation scholars put together to say a little bit more about um, the work that we're doing um, and how it all fits in with the education strategy. So the second uh, key theme uh, that, that we had for our um, uh, yes, I had a feeling that might happen, so I'm going to get back to it. It's actually kicked. There we go. Um, so yeah, the the second mechanism is having got the leadership in place was to seek out the innovators. So like I said, we're aware that there's some amazing stuff going on across the university, but it's really it was really about trying to capture what that is, where it's happening, how it's happening, and so. We, over the last few months, we've built up a, a database of people from, from all across the university. We've been engaging them in dialogue. And as part of that, we've been capturing some of the, the key themes that have come out of those discussions. And what you see on the screen here now is a, is a, some of the, the, the kind of the top level themes that have come out of all the discussions that we've had that may well go on to form part of a, um, a signature pedagogy, a, a sort of a man-met approach, if you like, to, to our teaching and learning. Um, and we've got, you know, um, learning that's, that's about developing students fit for the future. Um, there's, I think somebody has a, a microphone uh, switched on. There's a little bit of background noise. Um, perhaps uh, you could switch that off. That would be helpful. Thank you. So, so we've got this um, future focused um, approach, uh, thinking about what our students are going to be doing in the future, what skills they will need, how we can develop our active learning to, to, for, you know, to meet those needs. Um, it's about Active learning is, is, is a social endeavor. It's highly collaborative and it is you know, a lot about interdisciplinarity and learning from each other. Uh, it tends to be very flexible, uh, giving students quite a lot of, um, uh, of, of choice and um, allowing them to, to put the, their own stamp on, on what they learn and how they learn. It's developmental. 
so uh, active learning is really good for doing this sort of just in time skills development where you 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 support students to develop the skills that they need at the point that they need them um active learning really you know at its heart really should be engaging challenging but fun as well um active learning classrooms should have a bit of a buzz about them um and work integrated learning um <clears throat> excuse me work integrated learning is is another really important facet that helps us to really get the sort of authentic real world uh, aspect of, of teaching um, across the students. So that was mechanism two. And uh, I think um, Carmen is going to pick up yeah. on the third mechanism. So the third one um, is building our active learning communities, because as we say, we have different groups and a community of practice, and so you are familiar with this uh, term, a group of people who share a passion for something and they want to share their knowledge, but also learn from others when they interact regularly. So how do we do this? How do we create and build this community of learning? Next one, please, Teresa. So um, as we say, the first part is to establish this dialogue around active learning. And we've done this individually with, with colleagues across the whole university. I think particularly for me, it has been probably a really pleasant, uh, pleasant experience because we have discovered so many things by doing that from different faculties. And, and then the second part is, is really try to drive an influence in the university policy and practice, including, for example, about how we share uh, what we are doing, uh, the visibility of what we are doing. Um, and this is including, for example, in looking at spaces in our website and resources. So it's more clear when people are looking for examples. Um, and the third one is to uh, collaborate, curate and connect people as well. Uh, by by looking at opportunities to share that uh, good practice. One of the things we discover through this conversation is the importance of looking for peer support, uh, for looking for um, ideas from other colleagues and, and, and sharing the opportunity to uh, find moments where we can uh, talk to other people about what they are doing, their ideas and their connections. And that's part of the community of practice. And through these conversations, we also uh, discovered the need to support professional development of both the staff and students. And so what we are going to be looking now is at other um, examples of what is your perspective of active learning? I think we can move now. Um, so previous one, <laughs> yes. So now is your opportunity to, to share your ideas. We have created a Padlet there, a link. You can use your mobile phones. And if you go to the Padlet, you'll have a, a first question, which is about your perspectives on active learning. If you want to say your definitions of active learning. So we'll give you a few minutes to go into the Padlet using that code and then uh, sharing your ideas. And I think Teresa will be opening the Padlet in a minute and will be able to, to see what you are sharing. If anybody cannot do that, obviously you can also use your the chat to add um, your, your definitions and, and ideas about what is active learning. OK, I'll try. I will um, there we go. That's the, the Padlet. You can always add to the chat if you cannot do it through the Padlet. Yes. Okay. 
Yes, I think that's a really interesting point, that, that last comment, learning by doing and reflecting on what you do. Um, we talk a lot about learning by doing, but I think that reflecting on what you do, what you have done, um, is, is a really important part of, of closing the circle, as it were. I think another element there is about creativity and then engaging experience for the students and staff. We'll go back later on to the students in more specifically. Okay, I think some people are already uh, looking at the second question. <laughs> so you are very proactive. Eh? You are already engaging <laughs> very actively. Um, maybe we can uh, look at the um, idea of uh, some of the definitions that we can find in the literature about what is active learning. So yes. maybe uh, Teresa, we can go back to the main PowerPoint. Yeah. So uh, keep, keep your keep your padlets open if you've got them open on your phones. Um, <clears throat> I just thought um, it would be useful to just tap into a few of the, the there are loads and loads of definitions of of active learning um, in the literature. Um, here are some that, have, that, that are taken as extracts from the paper that's listed at the bottom there, which is from 2021. Um, and starting from, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat, the, the, top, the top two on the left-hand side, um, th these are both uh, tapping into, um, I, I guess, learner involvement and ownership. Um, so that they're not particularly about the activities, it's about their relationship, if you like, to the learning. Um, and then we've got one that talks about um, a, a, about practical activities and discussion, and then one about real life situations or problems. So those two are more about the kinds of activities, the kinds of, of teaching, if you like. And then the top two on the right, um, they're more about tapping into students' personal experiences and insights. Uh, so making it kind of relational um, to, to them and their, their experiences, their motivations, aspirations, and so on. And the, the one that I, uh, that's at the bottom on the right, which I, I put in slightly larger letters, um, that, that one jumped out at me. Partly because it was, um, I think it was the oldest one that was in that particular paper, it's from 1995. But it struck me as being um, more of a, I suppose, of an overarching um, viewpoint. And <clears throat> really kind of taking that position that the effective learning really takes place when students are involved. Uh, and now, now you can interpret the word involved in a, a number of different ways, but but they have some say in it. They are not passive receptacles. Uh, they're involved somehow in its design or its development or in choices, but in some way. And I think that's quite a, an important uh, aspect of active learning. Whoops, sorry, I'm jumping around. Sorry about that, uh, Carmen. So here you have the definition that uh, Manchester Med has taken to, to define after learning or our active learning approach, which as, as we will see is an umbrella term, but implies, as, as Teresa was saying, the student-centered approach. And when the learners actively are involved in tasks, often in peers or in groups. So, because we are talking here about this way of looking for activities that are meaningful for the students, that are making the learning more deep and more um, interesting, that's why we are coming to the next activity for you, which has to do with the task that you think are examples of um, active learning, something that you have already implemented in your classes, uh, good, useful examples. Um, so we can move to the next one, Teresa, and, and go to the Padlet again, and we'll just find uh, examples 
of these um, activities that you have been implemented. And we have already a few there. So hands-on projects, mock trials, and using tools in applying it to a situation. And by tools can be, I guess, many things there. I'm still stuck on the first one, Carmen. I'm, <laughs> um, design a session based on the silence is golden approach. Um, I imagine that means silence is golden, uh, as in from you know from the, the, the point of view of um, the, the the lecturer, the facilitator, you know, not saying too much. Um, but but if that's not the case. Um, do please um, come on the mic or put something in the chat or or add something to that. I really like that though. Using tools and applying it to a situation. Mock trial, love that. Debates, simulations. Uh, yeah, I like that one. Students design and make teaching materials. I do actually include in one of my assessments, I give students the option of, of what format they want to present it in. And one of the options that, 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 I, that I give them is a lesson plan. Um, because I think it's if you understand something well enough to be able to explain it to others, then you really understand it. So I think that you know that that point there of students designing and making teaching materials is is a really good approach um yes we have i don't i, I can't actually see the um the list of participants at the moment uh, as to whether rod is here but uh rod uh, cullen is one of the contributors to the 100 ideas for active learning book it's it's a brilliant resource if you haven't seen it already, please do have a look at it. It's loads and loads of ideas, different ways of doing things. Videos, discussions, digital story creation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was going to say another of the samples of the students uh, co-creating or creating is uh, another of the projects we've been running, I've been running here, which is the reusing uh, some of the assessment that the students do to share with future students so they learn from the students is peer uh, learning uh, creating videos which is part of this collection of open educational resources for students by students or a series of podcasts with the best advice from the students about how to to the world in your independent research project or dissertation in a way it's also like a community of practice digitally with uh, within the students community so thank you very much for for sharing all these ideas in a way what we are doing is also building up a community of practice by sharing our uh, resources our ideas And um, we have, a, I think, Teresa in the next one, you're going to present some of the examples. Yeah, so um, th this is this is just a, a range of, um, I suppose, sort of broader approaches to active learning. Um, now, the, the QR code, which you can uh, follow up on um, later or, or, or now, if you wish, um, and, the, and the link at the bottom, um, they, they take you to to one of the the resources on our university teaching academy web pages, which are externally facing, and they they it, it's a little bit bit like a sort of smaller version of that hundred active learning ideas, um, with with lots and lots of little uh, examples of different activities that you can use. What's on the screen, I suppose, is is sort of broader approaches. Um, that, that encompass many of those ideas. And it, it's not by any means comprehensive, um, but it, it's just a selection of ideas that, that sort of fit with that, that whole Kolb idea of the experiential learning cycle, you know, of uh, and, and 
you can start it obviously in different places but you know that that kind of not just doing something but doing something and reflecting back on it and what happened and why did that happen and what can we do to make it different next time we do it and and so on so it's a very much a cycle approach um and, and some of these things on the screen you'll be familiar with you'll notice that ai is is absent um uh that that's partly because we don't want really to get drawn off into <laughs> to another large area of discussion but there, there's huge potential um with, with ai and, and active learning um but, but a lot of these ideas they are about playful fun engaging but also challenging ways of of learning um so do do explore that that resource um at your leisure the slides will be um available afterwards but i'm going to go back to carmen now who's going to so so we've had some thoughts from yourselves about what active learning is and we've had a little look at what's in the literature um but but carmen's done a little bit of work on um on what students think about it so um I think it's really, or we think that it's really important to consider as well the student perspectives on, on active learning. So Teresa and Valeria Vargas, who is also a colleague uh, here with us at Manchester Metropolitan, we have started a project, as you can see there, with Ida. Uh, and Ida is one of um, a master's student. Um, and what we are trying to do is to identify uh, perspectives on active learning by both students and staff. Uh, not only teaching staff, but we are particularly interested in what um, students understand by after learning and, and what is their perspective. So currently, Ida is is really doing that. Is is asking uh, students about their definitions uh, and reflection on what is after learning. And what you are seeing there, and in the next uh, screen is probably going to be bigger is some of the reflection of my final year students as we were finishing i asked them to think um, what is for them active learning and you can see they are uh, learning through different uh, formats uh, we are in uh, obviously in languages so they have to to use different ways of demonstrating the level of language skills for example um, I love this one that they talks about showing the critical thinking, um, but also the opportunity to give feedback on the teaching styles and lesson plans. Uh, I have a very open discussion with my students as well, always on reflecting on how they do their presentation, but also on what they like about or they don't like about what we are doing as a, as a, as a teacher. Um, I also like the idea of consciously learning. So reflecting again on what they are doing and looking for different opportunities, participating and the interaction and the proactive engagement, which I think is very important. And that's what they see as well in this project I mentioned before about open educational resources for students um, by students. So it's the same. And I think that's really a good reflection, probably of what we are going to find later on when we start to see the results of this project that I mentioned before. So I think to the next one. Um, yeah. But I'll that's give you time to, to think. And, and, and if you want to comment anything, again, uh, please in the chat is your opportunity to also add uh, Maybe any experiences that you have with uh, with your students, or as well, if anything has called your attention um, about this um, map, please feel free, or you can use the the mic if you if you want to intervene now. Okay, I think we can move to the next one now. I'm going to move on, yeah. So, um, so that that's kind of a, a bit of a snapshot of of what we're trying to do or what we're trying to achieve. Um, but in terms of <clears throat> how we actually go about that through building a community of practice um, at our university, 
um, we're thinking about you know what what we how that community of practice develops what it does you know how we can use that to, to build this momentum towards bringing other people along uh, with us in the this active learning journey because we we want to be a university that's known for active learning uh, active experiential skills based learning so what we've got as a sort of overarching terms of reference is perhaps a little bit um, perhaps a little bit too formal a term but but these are these are our, our sort of um, ideas about what we want to do so one one is is about building that community of people and, and we think the best way to do that is to have regular meetings where we can share and showcase practice maybe have external speakers um, We'd, we'd really like those those sort of online meetings to be places where people can say, well, I, I've come up with this idea of, of, a, of a, an active learning, an activity that I want to do in my class, but I'd like to try it out first. I want to see how it goes. I want to get some feedback on it. Um, and we'd like, to, we'd like to, you know, to be able to give that opportunity to people to use those meetings for that as well. Um, but we also want to continue to capture the good practice and, and get it out there, um, both within the university, but um, uh, Carmen may say a little bit more about this later on, but we are looking to curate and publish uh, an open access um, online book showcasing uh, scholarship around active learning. And, and, and that's something that we'll be looking for um, expressions of interest. Uh, in uh, a bit later on. Uh, again, as Carmen mentioned, we want to support our colleagues in their professional development if they are they're doing really exciting work and they're doing evaluation and maybe writing it up and getting stuff published or disseminated. We want to be able to provide support for that uh, or maybe training, maybe write, writing retreats, boot camps even. Um, but I think above all, for a community of practice, it needs to be about the membership rather than about the leaders kind of dictating the agenda. And so we, we, we want to try and get across this message that it is very much about the members bringing their ideas and their questions um, and, and their themes, if you like, for discussion. So what, what we'd really like from you, and, and I hope this will be relevant and useful for your own um, situation, your own practice as well, is we'd like to get some sense for you, uh, from you as to, you know, what, what are the essential aspect, uh, characteristics of a community of practice that, that work, that are effective? So if, if I move to the next slide, you'll see a little bit what I mean. So we, we, have, um, we have a mentee, um, it's got two questions on it and, and the first question um, is at the top there it's how can we through a, a community of practice ensure that we don't become like a regular meeting that has an agenda and you know minutes and stuff like that but that we maintain a kind of or, or develop a sort of dynamic and creative innovative place where people can you know um, brainstorm ideas and develop things. Um, so if you if you would go to the mentee, I'll, I'll show it up on the screen um, in just a moment. If you go to the mentee and um, and just just write something in, let us know what you think about that. You can use the QR code or you can just type in mentee.com and then type in that number and that should get you in. In the chat, you'll I'll find them. Thank I'll you. put the mentee link yeah. into the chat. Thank you, Ian. So, just so anyone wants to join, there's a quick link in the chat. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so I will uh, put that up on 
the screen. Okay, so we've we're not quite there yet. But but if if you're having any difficulty with that, then do please just um, put something in the chat instead. I think it's quite a challenging question, actually. I don't, I'm not sure whether people are just finding this a bit tricky to to answer or whether it's unclear. Um, do do let us know, um, or I can move on to the the second question. It's um, I think it's not letting people add responses there's some messages in the chat um and someone's oh, right. responses are turned off oh okay right well that's a bit weird sorry about that uh it's the it's the last icon on there Teresa. the right i think other is the responses so the, right the sorry i'm not I'm not catching. You have you have the right to uh, a menu there. That, 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 that was hovering. Being the shortcut. Sorry, you're break you're you're breaking up, so I'm I'm not uh, I'm not following you. Uh. sure what's happening now <laughs> well no, don't worry teresa we can i'm going to stop sharing just for a moment yeah <laughs> find it there back to... what we are doing and this is part of the example of a yeah. good community of practice where people are helping you what's the problem <laughs> but we did test it before with me and it was working so let's yeah. hope that it works now that's that's a bit weird yeah okay right. so i'm not i'm not really sure about that anyway um so the, the the second question i will share my screen again in just a moment um the second question perhaps if we can deal with this one through the um through the chat rather than menti um this is this is really about trying to get some sense of what you think might work best um in, in terms of of actually having a a real positive impact on on active learning so um, i'm going to share my my screen again um share the screen there we go and then go to yeah so so yeah thinking about those activities there and those are just examples thinking about getting in external speakers or master classes uh, having those, what I mentioned earlier, the sort of the tryout practice sessions uh, where people can, you know, maybe bring an idea along and get some feedback. Supporting and promoting colleagues who want to go that step further and uh, and evaluate the work that they've done and then maybe write it up for publication or dissemination. 
um, just just having you know dialogue, just having open-ended themed discussions around practice, just finding out you know having conversations about what people do, how it works, and then having the I suppose the more formalised specific training or workshops that sort of thing. Um, so really, yeah, if we could just get a sense in the chat as to or maybe other things that you think uh, have the most potential to to really have an impact on active learning practice um, as we start to try to roll it out across the institution. And I, I don't know whether Carmen, if, if, can you see the chat at the moment? Because I can't, I think. Yes, I can. Present. Um, yeah, so if you, if you just let me know. Um, there are many, of, um, there are a couple of um, answers related to the previous question, one by, by the other, Teresa, uh, on using creative disciplines like media, storytelling, uh, making something across um, disciplines in an alternative way. I think that's a really useful way of, of, um, of bringing uh, a more creative approach. Encouraging a student's idea. And there was before one question related to the idea if the students participate in this community of practice, which was um, one of the elements that I discussed just no, just no creating a, a, a community without the students in, in different ways. So it's about how do we involve students actively in our community of practice. Uh, the project that we mentioned earlier um, is one example of bringing along the, the, the students um, and also setting the example that I mentioned about um, students co-creating and sharing is another example that we want to bring across um, the university and other departments. I don't think we have any more there, but maybe there will be more in the in the question and answer session later on. Then maybe we yes. can move to what we are going to be doing next, which is what we've done recently. You have two examples there. We did an event on the 7th of February, and you have the photo there, which was about um, developing um, Manchester Met signature pedagogy, where all um, the active learning scholars participated. So uh, as we mentioned before, we have different communities of practice, and there was a, a, an involvement of all of us, as well as inviting colleagues from all the universities across the university, and not only teaching staff, but also other colleagues working in different uh, areas. And that was also really helpful in the morning. It was a kind of short presentations. And then in the afternoon, there was the opportunity to discuss on specific issues and bringing the voice of colleagues with ideas and suggestions. Uh, another of the activities which we have started is to have a series of webinars inviting some of the colleagues that we identified through this uh, dialogue that we started in September. And the, the, the first one we did was uh, with Rod Karen, who can be here, and another uh, colleagues from, from the digital education team on developing a, a Manchester Met active learning spectrum that you have there in, in the in the photo, um, just to try to show all the possible ways of, of getting uh, a more active learning approach. Um, and those ideas were also discussed and brought forward and more ideas came along during the, the webinar that we have. And we are having another two webinars and the next, uh, next slide, please, Teresa. And you are all invited to, to this um, webinars. You'll have later on the, the PowerPoint and you'll be able to, to find the links there. If you have any problems, just send us an email. Um, so the next one is by one of our colleagues in the Department of Psychology. He does quite a lot of um, online learning or we can say a, a, a hybrid way of, of teaching. And that's um, it's going to take place next week. Um, get back to where you went once we learn. And I think it's going to be quite an interesting way of, of uh, developing a student agency. And another thing we are having is uh, along um, our role as a 
innovator scholars, the university has also implemented implementing a new scheme called Associate Scholars. These are colleagues that at departmental level um, are offering or suggesting uh, a project that they want to develop and pay forward, which is more or less uh, also alienated to one goes along with one of the different uh, um, communities of practice. So what we are having on the 17th of June is showcasing uh, some of the activities that uh, have been carried out by our colleagues. And I think we have one of our colleagues here, Salwa, um, who is going to be participating. And we hope that this will also um, help other colleagues to think how they can bring forward new ideas and projects. And finally, Teresa mentioned uh, before that we have this idea of creating or designing a couple of books. So one book is going to be more uh, on a practical term. So you have ideas about active learning, a little bit what like the one we saw previously, but not only on active learning, but assessment as well, uh, community engagement and so on. So this will cover the whole spectrum of communities of practice. And then another book, which will be an open access uh, book on active learning specifically, and again, it will be open to colleagues at Manchester Met, but as well as colleagues um, nationally and internationally. So please, um, we'll, we'll, we'll share also the call through this group um, when we have it ready, and it will be for publication uh, next academic year. And I think with this, we finish, uh, but we are more than happy to to you know, uh, respond to any questions or listen to your suggestions. Um, and I have, I think we're going to stop there sharing so that Teresa can also see uh, the questions that we have already in the chat. Thank you very much. And I think we have a couple, one question here from Susan um, uh, about linking, um, Asking the students what they want or what they expect is possible and meet these expectations, linking the experience to the workplace, how this affect them, how it might affect their practice. Yes, I, I think it's um, it's it's a it's quite a challenge uh, sometimes. Um, getting especially getting like first year students uh, even to think about the workplace. <laughs> As far as they're concerned, they've embarked on something that's going to take them three years and they don't have to think about the workplace until they get to the end of it. Um, so I, I think I, I completely agree with, with that comment, Susan, but, but I think it, 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 we have to find ways of, of getting students to engage with those discussions um, really effectively. Yeah. I think uh, to add to that, we have one of the communities of practice is especially dedicated to uh, enterprise um, yes. and that is really bringing different types of experience where uh, across the programs students have the, the experience either because of work placement or because the assessment or no formal uh, education um, experience bring along that experience as well. So I think as, as we said before, although we are different um, communities of practice, we are really kind of, it's very difficult to separate one from the other. Yeah. Um, so Susan, maybe you can <laughs> tell us more about what you've done because you say you've done some labs and it's very effective. Hello, yes. Um, I just had I had some uh, level four students and um, they'd actually I'm a, um, an applied physiologist so I'd ask and, and the students had asked me whether they could use our environmental chamber. Now these are all coaching students within the Department of Sports and Exercise Sciences, um, and as coaching students they do more practical work related to sports activities as opposed to lab based work. But at level four they do an um, an anatomy and physiology unit. It's only 15 credits of both anatomy and physiology. So it's a whistle stop tour. So um, I'd had a few students ask me about the environmental chamber and thought, yeah, why not? Let's let's do this. We, you know, change the schedule. 
um, and it was really effective because we did um, different sessions, altitude, heat, and then we just did a normal lab environment and comparing the data, um, the same exercise mode and intensity across the three experiences. Um, and for them, just seeing the difference in heart rate response in the in the differing conditions, particularly with heat, which was something that's going to be relevant to coaches if they're um, with a squad on a tournament, you know, rugby sevens where, you know, they've got their, um, you know, short bouts, but maybe three hours of, of playing matches um, in a hot environment. So just small things like we, we spoke about, well, what could you do as a coach to support this? So remember talking about, you know, that, that open communication with, um, with your athletes, taking things like gazebos, you know, how can you plan ahead, um, looking at weather conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just really, really useful and, and something that I believe and hope that they will remember because remember then to take into their own practice. So, um, yeah, I, for me, it was, it was quite a powerful session, um, but then able to bring in the physiology, the actual theory behind that, you know, why is this happening and then what can we do? To, to minimise the negative effects that, that may occur. Thank you very much, Susan, for sharing that. I think there was uh, another one by, um, ooh, there's a couple of questions there. Uh, there was one by Andy, um, um, which was about finding job descriptions and, and getting the students to, get, to see how they can apply in the context of workplace as well. That's a really useful one. Um, I do actively ask my students to get engaged in LinkedIn as well and looking at uh, what are the skills that they have already and they maybe it's more visible when you look at uh, different profiles as well. Um, and another comment from Teresa um, about the transition from uh, coming from uh, schools, college, to the university, uh, about how they they balance uh, the way they were used to be learning to the new after learning. Thank you. Yeah, I've, um, Teresa, I, or Teresa, sorry, I don't know how you pronounce your name. <laughs> Mine's Teresa, anyway. Um, I, I've done a little bit of, of research um, on that. Um, particularly looking at first year students and how they respond to uh, active learning styles like inquiry based learning. Um, and what we've found with that is that if you if you hit them with it in a, in a structured and supported and scaffolded way right at the beginning, um, it, it's as though, you know, they don't know any different. They come in and they go, well, this this must be what university life is like then. And they just go with it and, and they you know, there are people that say you can't do inquiry based learning with with first years, but but that's not been our experience. I think the problem comes when you have students that are doing something like that in one module and they're sitting in a lecture theatre being passive in another module and it's, it, it, they're getting a, a confused picture. And I think that's when the, the challenges arise. Uh, we have another question from Fiona uh, Kennedy. What plans? do you have uh, for evaluating the impact of the communities of practice? That's a very good question. And I don't know if we have uh, the complete answer yet um, about how we are going to evaluate it. The role that we have is for two years. Uh, it was originally for one year. And the understanding is that in a year, it's very difficult to measure any changes. Um, I guess it's more about seeing uh, on the one side what um, staff to, for the staff to understand more about um, the Manchester Met education strategy, to get familiar, but also to look for these examples of practices. And I think the second part is to see how um, staff are really uh, exploring and looking for the way of developing professionally through these um, uh, one educational strategies, research practice as well. And, and, and that the staff feel supported 
if a staff is supported, then students will be also supported. But as I say, it will be it will be something we'll have to think more carefully next next year. Yes. And I think we, we have to finish now. Ian is appearing there to tell us to. Yeah, <laughs> me just keeping an eye on everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for putting your perspective of getting the momentum running. I sympathise and quite a lot of things which I've experienced in the past. And we wish you every luck. But do please carry on sharing. Um, you said the PowerPoint will be downloadable so that anyone who didn't have any of the links and would like to check the links out, that would be fine. I also did put quite a few links within the chat if anyone wants them, if you've seen them now. But I would like to, on behalf of Richard and ourselves and our little group, thank you very much for presenting today and look forward to the blog. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please uh, write to us. 